Unit 2. Recording 3. 1. I decided to do this because I hate it when people forget my name. Like at school, the teachers who don't know your name, they don't give you so much attention. So anyway, I looked on some websites to find out the best way to do it. Apparently, there are two important things. First is that when you're introduced, you really pay attention and look at the person and try to find a way to remember the name. For example, I recently met a woman called Kira and she had curly hair. So, Kira, curly, sound similar. You see what I mean? That was easy. Then, secondly, you need to repeat the name as often as possible. Say it to yourself several times and use it when you're talking to the person. You just have to be careful that you don't sound really strange. Anyway, the result's been good. Somehow, people seem friendlier, and I feel a lot more confident about chatting to people. The only problem is, someone told me it made people uncomfortable because they couldn't remember my name. 2. It was quite difficult at first. I mean, you actually have to stop people trying to give you one. I didn't realise before I started how many had given out all the time. I thought this was a good thing to do because apparently it can take up to a thousand years for one to decay, and about 13 billion are given out each year in the UK alone. And it's not only the pollution, but animals and fish can get caught in them. Anyway, I invested in two shopping bags and I've been using them for the past three months. The only problem is I keep forgetting to take them out of the house. Or I leave them in the car, which is very annoying. My solution has been to get one of those fold up bags that you can carry in your pocket or bag. I've got all my friends to do the same, and now our local shops are going to become a plastic bag free zone. At least that will make me remember to take a bag. 3. I thought this was a good one to try because everyone always looks so bored or miserable, especially on public transport. So the next time I was sitting on a train and someone sat opposite me, I looked up and gave them a big smile. They looked a bit surprised, but smiled back at me, then buried their face in the newspaper. I got the impression they were a bit embarrassed. Anyway, I continued and kept smiling at all sorts of people during the day. To be honest, I got a mixed reaction, but the kids and older people seemed the friendliest. Oh, and I found out later that one woman in the office thought I was flirting with her. Four. I decided to combine two of the ideas. I've always been hopeless at telling jokes. I'm sure it's not because I don't have a sense of humour. It's something about the timing. And I know that jokes are great for building relationships and good for me personally, as I often have to give business presentations. And a funny story really helps build rapport with the audience. One of the best things about doing this was that I asked all my friends to tell me their favourite jokes, and we had lots of laugh out loud times together. And I'm getting better, though I did have one very embarrassing moment at work when I told my joke to my boss and he just stared at me like I was an idiot. You want to hear a joke? Something short? OK. Uh, <clears throat> what do cows do on Saturday night? They rent movies.